Today I'm going to start building a blanket chest and it's basically a box that I'm going to dress up with some legs and some decorative moldings. Now I've already cut the plywood for the box. Uh, let me bring the camera over and show you the drawing and I'll give you an idea of how I'd like to start a project. This is the drawing for the project and the measurements I have down here are pretty close. They may change a little bit depending on the thicknesses of some of the moldings but it's enough to start building. And the first step is to build the inside of the box and for that I've made a cut list, I've cut my plywood and now I'm ready to start assembling the box. I'll build the box out of five pieces of plywood. Two sides, a front and a back, and a bottom. Now I want the bottom of the bottom of the piece of plywood to be five eighths of an inch from the bottom of the sides and the front and back. So it's a little confusing but anyway I've cut a piece of wood, a scrap piece of wood at five eighths of an inch and I'll use that as a guide as I'm assembling the box. I've pre-drilled and countersunk a few holes and now I can attach the sides to the bottom with a little wood glue and inch and five-eighths screws. And I'm making sure that when I attach the sides to the bottom that the bottom of the bottom is right on that line that I drew using the block of wood as a guide. And you can see that the block of wood is flush with the bottom of the side. Well, now that I've finished assembling the box, I'm ready to move on to the face frame. But I wanted to mention that the inside of the box is going to get a clear coat and the outside is going to be painted. So I made sure to use the good side of the plywood on the inside. Well, I've taken a minute and drawn out the panel in the center and on the sides. And from there, I'll make a cut list. I finished the cut list and now I can start to mill all of the parts I'll need for the face frames. Real quick, just to help you better understand a cut list, basically I've got a quantity on the front here, that's my two, and this is my width, three and a half inches wide, and my length is ten and three quarters. And what I like to do to stay organized while I'm making the parts is once I rip all of my material, I'll put a check mark. And then eventually when I've cross cut all my material, I'll put an X and then I know that I'm done. So basically the, the cut list tends to go like this. You sort of rip first and then cross cut next. frame parts cut and I'm ready to assemble them. I've got my front and my two sides and the cool thing is I found my Craig jig. I had bought a Craig jig probably about 20 years ago and thought I lost it on a job site and I've been looking at my outfeed table here trying to redesign something and I took the top off and in there was my old Craig jig. They don't even make this model anymore so I'll show you how it works. This Craig jig has a pneumatic clamping device and it came with a hose that attaches to the compressor and a foot pedal that goes on the floor and you step on it to engage the clamping device. Well, I was pretty excited about that find, so right away I called Craig and ordered a box of inch and a quarter screws, a new driver, and one of their drill bits.
Well, now that I've got all of my face frames put together, the next step is to pre-drill and countersink a few holes so I can attach the face frames to the box. I attached the face frame to the sides of the cabinet and now I'm ready to attach the front face frame and I'm going to use a little wood glue and inch and a quarter screws. I'll hold the face frame in place with a few squeeze clamps and two or three nails will keep the face frame from moving around when I go to attach it permanently with the screws. Once I finished attaching the face frame to the cabinet, I gave the whole cabinet a good sanding to make sure all of my joints were nice and flush because the next step is to make and attach the legs. Now I've made one of the legs and it's, they're not hard but it can be a little confusing so I'm going to really take my time here and show you how I made the legs step by step. Before I get started building the legs, I thought I'd show you the one that's finished just so you have an idea of what I'm going for. The first step was to cut four boards at two and an eighth and four boards at one and five eighths and then resaw them at a half of an inch. The overall length of the legs will be about 22 inches. So I cut these heavy at 22 and three quarters. And the next step is to glue and nail. You want to nail through the two and an eighth inch wide piece of wood into the inch and five eighths wide piece of wood, making sure you're flush at the front. I'm using an inch long nail and I'll make sure that I'm about two and a half inches up from the bottom of the leg. I also want to make sure that I'm about two and a half inches down from the top of the leg. As soon as the leg is assembled, remove any wood glue with a wet rag on the outside of the leg and on the inside of the leg. Now the outside of the leg measures two and an eighth by two and an eighth, and the inside of the leg is one and five eighths by one and five eighths. So I've milled a piece of poplar on the table saw down to one and five eighths by one and five eighths, and I'll use this as a filler at the bottom of the leg. I've cross cut the filler block at four inches, and I'm gonna make sure I get a good amount of glue on the block, and that will fit right inside and to help keep the block from walking around when I clamp it I'll shoot a nail through the front I'm staying three and a half inches up from the bottom of the leg and about three quarters of an inch in and I'm doing that because I want to be clear of the bandsaw blade when I cut the shape of the leg out And you really want to get rid of this glue before it sets up. And a good tool for that is an artist paintbrush soaked in water. This is a leg that I glued up earlier this morning. And I'll unclamp it and we'll cut that pattern into the bottom of the leg. Now I'm going to make the pattern and that's the curve in the bottom of the leg. I'm using the cutoff left over from when I milled the legs at the very beginning. And I'm going to measure up three and three quarters from the bottom of the leg and let's say 13 sixteenths right at the bottom here and I'll square across at the three and three quarters and then just try to draw a simple arc connecting the two lines I've cut the pattern out on the bandsaw and now I can use the same pattern for all four legs. Thank you. 
Well, I just finished trimming the leg so it's flush with the top of the cabinet. And that's why I held back a little bit when I nailed the leg together. I held back about two and a half inches and that was so I was clear of the saw when I went to trim the leg up for its final fit. I used inch and a quarter screws, a few nails and some wood glue to attach the legs. And the next step is to start to trim out these panels and for that I'm using a small base cap molder. Okay, well I finished trimming out the inside of the panels and now I'm going to move on to the piece of molding at the bottom of the cabinet and I'm using the same base cap molding. I'm going to carry the molding around the leg so I want to transfer a straight edge and I'll do that by holding this block of wood and then I'll use a square. And now when I attach the molding I'll keep the bottom of the molding at that line and as I work my way around the cabinet I'll keep the bottom of the molding flush with the bottom of the cabinet. Let's take a closer look on how to do one of these inside miters. So I've cut an inside miter on the piece of base cap. I'll hold it tight against the cabinet and put a mark right at the edge of the leg. Now I'm back at the miter saw and this little piece here, this is the piece I need so I'll have to keep my eye on it when I cut it with the miter saw. And there it is on the floor. I'll check it to make sure I have a nice fit. And that looks pretty good. So now I can cut the longer piece of molding that goes along the bottom. Now this little inside piece is just getting glued, no nails. And I've got glue on all three sides. I finished with the molding at the bottom of the cabinet and now I've moved on to the top and what I want to do is cap the end grain of the inner plywood box and I'm going to do that with a piece of poplar that I've ripped to two and seven eighths and then resawed to a half of an inch and what that will do is give me a little bit of a lip and then underneath that lip I'll run a piece of cove molding. Well, I'm not exactly sure what I want to do on the top of the blanket chest yet, so I, I'm going to make a part two to this video. Uh, and also, I think the video is getting kind of long. Now, uh, eventually, I'll have a good cut list and a drawing up on my website. Uh, the one that I've been working from, I've changed a little bit, so give it a couple of days. But if you want to build this blanket chest, you can go to johnpeters.com and search blanket chest. And I'd say by the end of next week, a good drawing should be up on the site. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.